What's good, YouTube fight fans all over the world? It's your boy, Real Talk Boxing, and I'm back at you again in the lab. Just finished with the workout, and I'm ready to talk about some more boxing. Uh, money, y'all. Money. Revenue. Dinero. <laughs> uh, that's very important nowadays in boxing. As a matter of fact, it's number one. Make no mistake about it, it's all about the money now in this day and age, in this era of boxing. It's not like other eras, when the best were fighting the best. Um, of course, they wanted to make money, but back in the day when we were talking Hagler, Hearns, Sugar Ray Leonard, you think he's better than me? He's in the top three, I'm the champion? Then let's fight. And that's what we lack nowadays in boxing. You, We all know this. We all know this. Um, is it sad? Yes, in some cases. Do I understand that boxing has turned into nothing but a revenue sport, a money sport? I understand it completely. And at, sometimes I do get annoyed with it. I do get disgusted with it. But other times I think about the boxing standpoint and how the world is nowadays. And I'm going to explain that, all right? So, I'm going to use Sean Porter as an example. Sean Porter now has a YouTube channel called The Porter Way Podcast, The Porter Way Podcast. And I saw a video with him and two other friends talking, you know, about his potential fight against Terrence Bud Crawford. Okay, Bob was trying to pay the man a million dollars, and I think I did a video over this before. Um, I'm not beating a dead horse, I just want to use this as an example now, Porter, he right off the top was like, I'm not taking a million. I'm not taking a million. He said, I tried many times to get a hold of Bob Arum. I know people that know Bob Arum and try to get him to reconsider because I'm not taking a million dollars. You know, and he said, if, if this is Bob Arum's way of getting out of the fight with me, lowballing me, which you shouldn't do, he said, that's weak. Now, I don't know what the case is. I don't know if that's Bob Arum's uh, secret plan to get out of fighting Sean Porter. Because I don't think Terrence Crawford is afraid of Sean Porter. And I guarantee you Sean Porter is not afraid of Terrence Crawford. I think it's just a respect aspect. Now, I've had people on my last video about Sean Porter in this subject say, Sean ain't got no belt. Why is he worth a million dollars? And that kind of that kind of rubs me in the wrong way. It really does. And here's why I want to say that. Here's, I'm going to explain that too also. All right? And I want y'all to listen to me because a lot of you guys hear what you want to hear. I've stated it before. Please listen to me. Sean Porter has been around for a long time. He's one of the top five welterweights out there right now, regardless if he has a belt or not. He's a two-time former world champion. All right? I mean, his last fight, uh, well, his last fight was against, uh, what was that one kid? Sebastian. And... He put on a clinic, clinic in that fight. But the fight against Errol Spence Jr., to me, solidifies him as being more than a million-dollar fighter. Because not a lot of welterweights would give Errol Spence that type of action, action fight. Sean Porter showed up to the fight ready to die for those belts. He came in ready to go out on his shield. And if it wasn't for that knockdown, that one knockdown, what would have happened in that fight? What would the decision have been? That's all I'm saying. So for people to say that Sean Porter doesn't have a belt, so he's not worth a million dollars a fight, I disagree with that, man. I strongly disagree with that. So in this case, I can understand why Porter would say, bro, I'm not fighting for a million dollars. This is a this is a potential fight. This is a potential candidate for fight of the year. And I believe that's true. Because I give Bud a slight edge over Porter because of all the levels Bud has. But when Porter shows up like he showed up against Errol Spence, listen to me, y'all. He is very hard to beat. Very hard to beat. Not impossible to beat, but very hard. And he will give anybody tons of trouble if Porter shows up like he showed up against Errol Spence. And that was before Errol Spence wrecked his car crash, his accident. So Errol Spence was on point. It was who was going to outdog who. Porter got caught. Does that fight alone 
not warrant him the respect for more than a million dollars a fight. Now, some of you are going to disagree. Some of you are still going to say, I don't care what you say, real talk, because we can we can agree to disagree. I, I got people in comments that disagree with me all the time, but I, and I respect the ones who step to me respectfully, because I'm always step to you respectfully. Get that and understand that. YouTubers, when we put out content, not everybody's going to like it. You're going to get a bunch of dislikes sometimes on your video or a lot of times on your video. But we can respectfully have a conversation. But some people out there just, they don't, oh, no, you're stupid. You're dumb. You don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, you better have a thick skin if you're trying to do this YouTube thing. Because some people really try to get under you, man. Really try to shag you. Not shag you, shank you. <laughs> but anyway, any event, the, the fight game has turned into a revenue game. My man, Turbo Fight Hub, said it best. Boxing is all about money now. It really is. It really is. And in some ways, it gets on my nerves. But in some ways, I understand because we as fans want to see the best fighting the best. We as fans want to see blood, guts, knockouts, knockdowns. But we don't consider the fighter's point of view an aspect of it. You got to understand this fighter is a, is a human being too. And nine times out of ten, they have a family to go back home to. If you've never been in the ring, listen to me. I don't care what level it's on. If you've never gloved up, if you've never strapped up against your cousin in the backyard, if you've never fought in any amateur competitions, if you've never fought in the professional ranks, I don't care if it's kickboxing, MMA, if you've never done anything combative-wise, getting punched in the face, then you will never understand. You'll never get it. Fighters put their lives on the line. When they step into the ring, I don't care what sport it is, martial, mixed martial arts, martial arts, karate, kickboxing, boxing, jujitsu, freaking taekwondo, I don't care what it is. Their life is on the line because you're fighting someone trained. And even if you're fighting your cousin at, a, at the backyard of a barbecue, your life's still on the line because if you get hit wrong, you get killed. I know for a fact. I know for a fact. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I saw a 23-year-old fight. Twice in one night, in an exhibition, um, eliminator, excuse me, in a, an eliminator tournament here in my own town in Texas. And he stepped out of the ring fine, went to the hospital that night, and died. I've seen it. 23, young, his whole life ahead of him. Ripped to a T, man, strapping young man. Got hit wrong with Hager on, my night, my, uh, my as you, with Hager on. He got hit the wrong way, went to the hospital that night, and at 23 years old, he died. And, and the night before, I actually cornered one of his fights. I actually cornered one of his fights. And the fight that he got hit when he was walking out of the ring, I remember looking at the kid. I'm looking at him. I said, yo, man, you all right? And he was real slow to react. I asked him that question. Yo, you good, man? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. And I knew something was wrong. Something just didn't seem right, but he walked out of the ring like he was fine, went to the hospital that night and died. That's the kind of stuff that us fans who ain't never strapped up before don't understand. So we can't be too hard on these fighters, man. You can be. You can. I can't, I can't tell anybody what to do or try to make people understand the, the severity of combative sports. So you can say what you want to say, but if you never strapped up, you'll never understand. So... Why should Porter want to put his life on the line just because he don't have a belt anymore and fight someone like Terrence Crawford for a million dollars? Now, a million dollars, to me, bro, I'm a, that's a wrap. Um, I, I didn't hit the jackpot. You understand? But for fighters who are used to getting paid a certain amount of money, and it's not even about that with Sean Porter, I believe. It's just about the respect, man, where he's been. The dues he has paid. You understand the blood, sweat, and tears, the sacrifice. That's what we we got to start understanding, y'all. So, yes, the fight game, the boxing game has turned into the revenue game, the money game. I get that, but we got to get with the times, y'all. But we certainly have to start opening our eyes to other aspects, especially when it comes to the fighter, man, their health and their well-being. Am I willing to get in this ring for a million dollars to sacrifice my life when I know that I'm worth more than that? And I don't blame Sean Porter in this case for saying I'm not fighting Crawford for a measly million dollars. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you agree with it or not?
Doesn't matter. But I still want to know your opinion. Comment down there. Let your boy Real Talk know. As always, respect all for none. God bless. Till the next time Real Talk Boxing, we gone.